Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. So glad you're with us today on this beautiful day that the Lord has given to us. It is made more beautiful, I believe, by your presence here, and that glorifies God. We are glad that you're worshiping with us in person or online. If you are visiting with us uh, today, it's your first time. We do have a special gift, just a welcome to you. Uh, other than our, our welcome area and our welcome desk, hope you'll pick that up if this is your first time, just a little gift from us to you. If you're visiting with us here or online, check us out on our webpage. There's a lot of information, a lot of uh, stuff there, things that we are doing, ministries that we're involved in. We'd love for you to be a part of that, so we hope that you will check that out. If you are worshiping with us online, remember next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month we will be observing Holy Communion. And so you can already kind of get your, your stuff ready for that, your bread and your juice, and know that will be happening next, next Sunday. We are going to um, be in need of some help here in the next few months, starting uh, especially in the next month. We have stepped up, speaking of online, we have stepped up from a iPhone phone camera trying to record and, and, and do all the videos to actual cameras and video, and it is an awesome wonderful way for us to reach out to those that are worshiping from home and we need some help running that equipment so if you are in any way possible that you can do this and this you can do it and we will teach you and train you so it is takes a little bit of involvement uh, but we are blessed to, to have Gary helping us with that setting that up if you can help in that way contact the church office let me know we'd love for you to to help with that uh, we have a habitat work day one of the great things that we do in this church is our outreach uh, all over the world in our own community habitat home bill uh, August 21st in Snellville Larry Stone is is in charge of that they're clapping for you larry stone that was awesome he will clap for you if you sign up and so we need there's five more spots that are available for august 21st that's uh, in snellville from like 8 to, to 12 or so uh, if you can help with that at all let larry know and uh, he'll he'll sign you up our co-op, Norcross North Co-op, uh, Neighborhood Co-op Ministries Auction Basket Collection. We are collecting things for an auction uh, through Sunday, August 8th, next Sunday. Uh, they're having a family night, and so we're trying to get these things together for these families and the children. There's, you can donate, donate things like movies, family games, uh, fun snacks, things like that. And so to be, to be auctioned for this benefit. It's in the gathering area just down the steps. If you can help with that at all, we certainly would, would appreciate that. School starting back soon, and our preschool here, Creation Kids, also will be starting back. Uh, we have openings for the 21-22 school year, and uh, we need to fill these classrooms and get that back up and going. We have some information just outside our doors here for you to take with you, to, to hand out to your family, your friends, your neighborhood, uh, to try to get them to come let them fit into this wonderful preschool that we have here. So I hope that you'll take that and, and, and hand that out, pass that out to, to people as they need. Well, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it as we are called to this time of worship together.
He is worthy of our praise. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. Stand up and greet each other this morning. Wave around the room. Let people know you are glad that they are here today. If you're worshiping with us at home, we are glad to have you with us as we worship our worthy Lord. All right, let's stay standing as we sing, I sing the almighty power of God. Would please remain standing as we affirm our faith together in proclaiming what it is that we as apostles of God, disciples of God, what we believe in as we recite our Apostles' Creed together. What is it that we believe, family? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite you guys to continue standing, and I just want to give a shout out to the Lord, because the Bible says when the enemy comes in rushing like a flood, the Lord will raise the standard. So during practice today, I broke a guitar string, which wouldn't have been a big deal, except I used my last guitar string a couple weeks ago. So. Um, I frantically called my, my pregnant wife. I was like, hey, do you have a guitar? And, and then Daniel over there got me one, and then Audrey got me one. So uh, I only need one guitar, and then the Lord gave me three. So that, but that's how God is. He's abundantly, he gives us abundantly more we can ever hope for or imagine, like our cup overflows. So um, let's sing, I stand amazed. And, and I really am amazed at God's goodness. So here we go. Jesus the Nazareth 
Please be seated. How marvelous is God's love for, for us, and he shows that to us in so many different ways. You have stepped up and helped us out. We have a, a young couple in our church midst on our staff who are expecting their first child real soon, next month, I believe. And uh, not only have they been blessed with the abundance of guitars today, but with diapers. You have stepped up. There is a bin of diapers out there for y'all that... He'll be seven before he's done with all these, so that'll be, that'll be great. Uh, but we, if you don't mind, we would love to pray for y'all. And I know that maybe one of you can't kneel right now at the, at the altar, uh, or two of us can't kneel at the altar right now, but we'd love to have you come down and, as safety protocol things. I would like for y'all to be praying for this family as well. Derek and Audrey, uh, part of our church family, and we are blessed by them. Uh, this is exciting times, uh, not just for y'all, but for the church as well. So uh, pick those up before you leave yes, today. Sir. So, uh, But let, let's, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, two cards. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, kind of come this way. Well, you stay there, and you come there. There you go. And I want to pray for y'all. Let's pray. God, thank you for your love. Thank you for the way you show it to us in so many wonderful ways. We are blessed by Audrey and by Derek and their ministry here. 
And Lord, you have blessed them. And so we know that uh, with this child, um, you have great plans, uh, wonderful plans. And thank you for helping us be a part of it. Thank you for this church for stepping up to, to help them uh, out in these early days. And I remind them we're here for them as well. And so God bless them as they grow, as this child grows into love and knowledge of you. And may our church, may each of us be those great examples of Christ to help lead him as well. Bless this family. Be with Audrey in these next few weeks especially, Lord. We pray for a wonderful and safe and perfect delivery. And so that uh, your will is done and they are blessed. Uh, thank you, God, for their love and for the blessing they are to each of us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you. you. We're going to continue in our theme of, of prayer for our morning prayer. I know that you have things on your heart and your mind that God has is, is, um, um, placed on your heart to, to pray for. Uh, we do that for each other. We do that in our families and our friends, um, in our community. There are many needs in our community. And so, as we said, Habitat, sign up for that to help out many different ways that you can do so. Uh, we do want to uh, announce to you the, the passing of, of Betty Newell. Betty was a wonderful member of our church um, for, for many years and uh, 96, I believe, years she lived on this earth, and uh, what a great spirit she was. Uh, do keep Susan and Joseph in your prayers. Betty's uh, memorial service will be held here this, uh, in the chapel, actually, this coming Saturday. Uh, they'll be uh, receiving friends at 10 a.m. and then the service at 11. So uh, come if you can. If not, just keep Joseph and Susan, especially, in your prayers at, at this time. I know you have things on your heart as well, and God wants to hear these things. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, spend a few moments in your quiet time with God, and then I'll lead us in our prayer together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for a, a new day. And not just any day, but a Sunday, a day set aside for us to come and to, to worship you together, to be in your house, to continue to worship together, trusting you in our prayers and our times of need, trusting you, Lord, that you do hear us being reminded that Jesus says if we will obey your laws and follow your commands, it will show our love for him. And so, Lord, we have things on our hearts today, and we want to follow your way and follow your will. To be in your good and perfect will for each of us takes us listening and following and doing and trusting and obeying. And part of that, Lord, is trusting you with our prayers. And so we lift them to you, praying for one another in our times of need, lifting up Betty Newell's family, thanking you for her 96 years of life. We rejoice with her today in her homecoming. We do pray, though, for Susan and Joseph and all the family. We pray for any that are hurting today, that are struggling. And we praise you for the good things in our lives. We praise you, Lord, for births to come, new jobs starting, exciting possibilities and opportunities that you give us each day. Help us, God, not to face each day just trying and hoping to get through, not just surviving, but thriving, knowing that it's you that has given us this day. And with that comes great joy, new mercies, great opportunities so as we've joined together here to worship you here and in our chapel with our hispanic brothers and sisters god i pray that you would bless our time together that it would have meaning for each of us that we wouldn't hear a, a song we've heard before or we wouldn't hear a scripture we've heard before and think we've heard that before but lord what are you doing new in this Help us to be excited about what you're doing in our own lives, in our own hearts, in our church, in this community. God, you have a great plan. Help us to follow and to trust you in it. 
Forgive us where we have not been at our best. Forgive us where we have not been who you've called us to be. But guide us by your spirit starting from this moment on. Going forward with you. Guide us by your spirit. Show us your way. So that when we leave from this place today, we'll see you in all things. And all things will see you in us. For this and all of our prayers, we ask and we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our sustainer, our Savior. And we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. That was wonderful. I hope you are feeling the joy of that today. As we go to this time of prayer now for our offering, I know that um, giving is important and God wants us to have that giving cheerful heart and you do that and we're grateful for that. Different ways that you can give. We do have our gift uh, offering boxes in the back and so if you brought your, your offering today, 
We have envelopes also back there. You could use that. You could also mail in uh, your, your giving. You can do online contributions through your bank. You also can do it through our website. And so if you're interested in doing that, you can uh, click the Give button on our website, or you can text Norcross First to 73256. Different ways to give back to the Lord. Let's thank him for this offering. God, we lift our offering and our tithes to you, asking you to bless them, to bless the gift and the givers to the works of your kingdom here on earth. I pray, Lord, that you would receive these gifts, that it would help your gospel to spread, your kingdom to grow. It would help to continue to do the wonderful ministries you've called us to do. Bless them now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. so much. Our scripture reading for today is from Acts chapter 5, reading verses 29 through 32. I invite you to stand for the reading of scripture this morning from the New Revised Standard Version. It'll be on the screen. And if you have your few Bibles, certainly encourage you to open those to Acts 5, verses 29 through 32. Hear these words. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior 
that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our Lord, our rock, and our Redeemer. God, open our hearts, our minds, our very souls, our beings to hear from you, to hear your message for each of us today. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So God is doing a new thing. A new thing in each of us, a new thing, I believe, in our families, in our spirit, even in our bodies. And so I'm going to be sitting for a few Sundays uh, doing sermons, so uh, new hip stuff going on. And so just ask you to be in prayer for that. Some of it is because I probably didn't do what I'm preaching about today, obey More than likely, somewhere through the years, I didn't obey, I didn't listen to my doctors, I didn't do the things that probably I should have done that would have allowed me not to have to sit and do a sermon. Do what you're told. Do what you're told. Follow the rules. Doesn't sound fun, does it? Where's the fun in that? John Cougar Mellencamp fought authority, but authority always won. It's not always a positive vibe that we get when someone says, obey, do what I say. But isn't that a lot of what scripture is? It doesn't have to be negative. It can be very positive, it can be very loving, it can be very descriptive in how to follow. Jesus certainly said it a lot. When we hear it, obey me. It doesn't sound the same. When our parents tell us, or when we as parents do what I say, obey. A beautiful song that we're going to sing at the end, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And I've said before, the first part of that's not so hard, trust. As Christians, we know to do that. We trust in the Lord. We trust in his word. We trust in the spirit and what it's doing in our lives. It's the obey part that we don't raise our hands and sign up for. Biblically speaking, as Christians, the way to live happy, to live full, to live joyful lives, is to follow the Lord. And it's simple. Jesus, follow his example. Obey what he says. That's easy to say. Not so easy to do. And so we get caught up a little bit, and I think listening and reading the word and wanting to apply it in our lives and to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow these things that Jesus says to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow what, how the Spirit leads me. And, and it's pretty simple because there's if then all throughout Scripture. If we do this, then this is going to happen. If we don't do this, then you're going to be sitting on a stool and preaching. There's ifs and thens, there's consequences to the things that we do. There's consequences. And as when we were children, when we started having kids ourselves, we would tell them, follow the rules, do what you're supposed to do. And things would be so much easier if you just do what I told you to do. And that's the same in our Christian walk. Follow Jesus. Recently, I put up a a picture on my Facebook page, and it's talking about listening to the voice of God, and it's a really cool little thing, and it says it's hard to hear God's voice when we're already sure of what his voice is going to say. It's real simple when we say, hey, God, we want to follow you as long as you do what we want you to do, and so we got to be started thinking about the voices and God's voice versus Satan's voice, the worldly voices that we hear instead of God's voices that are here for us and on screen you see here's here's God's voice is God's voice when we hear his voice it's it's calming 
It's very comforting to us. It, it convicts us if we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. It encourages us to, to keep going, to keep listening, to keep following what he says to do. It enlightens us. It shows us the way. It lights our path for us. It leads us. It reassures us. And it, it calms us. It stills us. Be still and know that I am God. Then the world gets all mixed up in there, and you hear Satan's voice sometimes, and worldly voices get in there, and it gets us to obsess about things and what we're doing. It makes us worry instead of wonder. It makes us, it, we're condemning, we're discouraged at times, and we become discouraging to, to others. We get confused. Where are we going? What are we doing? Why do I feel bad? Why does this make me feel good? It confuses us. It pushes us off track. It pushes us away from, from the ways of the Lord. It frightens us because we find ourselves in places we didn't expect to be and we're rushing around. We're that chicken with the head cut off. We're, we're going all kinds of places and not getting anywhere. So how does this tie in to obeying? Well, when we listen to God's voice, things are better. Doesn't mean they're going to be perfect. Doesn't mean we're not going to experience some hard times. But his ways are so much better than the world's ways. We can obey God when we look at it in a positive sense. When we listen to his voice. When we do the things that we feel God is leading us, the Spirit is leading us to do. And we listen and we hear those words and we go, that makes sense. I'm not sure how it's going to work out, but, but I trust it's going to. So it can be a positive thing. When Jesus says, follow me, we hear that and we say, that's soothing, that's comforting, that's, that's nice. When, when Satan gets in there and says, forget about all that, do this stuff that makes you feel good, and it's confusing and that's what he wants us to do. But when we obey God, and we're going to look at the O and the B and the E and the Y of what that, what that means, it's obedience and it's our gift to God. Being obedient is our gift to God for what he is doing in our lives, for what he asks us to do, what he shows us to do. It is when we get in trouble is when we decide to go our own way. We go our own path and we think this way seems to be a little easier, a little bit better. It looks like a whole lot more fun. But there's fun in being a Christian. Amen? It is a joy to be a Christian. It is, it is fun at times. And when we know it's hard, we have each other. We stand up here to have our first baby. We know we have a whole entire family of moms and dads, big brothers and big sisters to, to help us out. And that continues throughout our lives. And being obedient to God shows our love for him. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. That's an if then. If you love me. Who in here as Christians would say, I don't really love Jesus? Of course not. So if we love him, then we're going to follow his commands. We're going to do these things. We're going to do the things that are pleasing to God. And we're going to mess up sometimes. And we're going to forget. And we're going to go off on our own. We're not going to obey. And there's consequences to it. But when we have that obedience, that true love for the Lord, then we do some things. And one of it is we offer praise to God. Being obedient to God means we offer our praise to him. We do that in so many different ways, and you do that in so many different ways on a daily basis. Offering praise to God is simply saying, thank you, God. I, I, I praise you for this. Sometimes when you think you have a plan and it's going to work and you got it and it all of a sudden falls apart because something better God has in store for you, and you, and you praise him for that. You might not have felt it at the time, but you look back and you realize God's plan was better. So when we offer our praise to him, we offer our praise to him in our prayer time. We offer our praise to him when we come and we worship and we sing along with the choir, with the praise band, when they're doing their own thing, when they're doing things together. I saw a bunch of heads bobbing and fingers tapping when they were singing that song together. And it wasn't because you didn't like it. You like that and it shows and that is a praise to God, being thankful. Just being in praise of him. And praise isn't loud and, and it has to be loud and jumping up and down and raising your hand. We praise him in so many ways because of what the choir sang to start our service today. He is worthy of our worship. 
He is worthy. He is deserving of our praise, of our entire beings to him, of, of gratitude and thanksgiving. So we offer praise to the Lord, even on Monday morning. We offer praise to him, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. We offer praise to God even when we don't feel like it sometimes because the world's hard and it's tough and, and Satan's reminding us of that whole list of things that we saw. So how are you offering praise to God? If someone said, how do you offer praise to God? Have you ever been asked that? Have you ever even thought about that? So how you praise him is important. Praise the Lord. Praise him for for the ups and downs. Praise him in the good and the bad. Praise him for everything that happens in your life because he promises he never leaves you. Leads us to our next one, the promise. Believe the promises of God. We are obeying God when we're believing what he says. When we look at the scripture and we see all these commands, a lot of people say that book is just full of do's and don'ts and you better. Okay, you better. It's what it's there for. It's our guidebook. Basic instruction before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. That is what this is for us. And so if we believe these promises, who in here has it? Who of us who have never heard a promise of God that he's made to us that God has broken, that he's gone back on? He keeps his promises. We have to believe in those promises. Sarah and I were doing our devotion the other day, and the scripture part was the father in, in Mark that said, I believe, help my unbelief. Many of you know that that scripture, and it's a hard scripture. So that means you, you believe, but not fully. Does that mean we, we look at the scriptures, and we look at these commands, and we, we believe them, but we're not real sure about them until we have to apply them. So this, this father's faithfulness, this father's acknowledgement of where he was in, in his Christian walk is, is really our place also. We believe. You're here today because you're watching today because you believe it's that unbelief part that, that gets us in trouble sometimes. It's that little bit of listening to those voices of the world, listening to Satan's voices to where we say, but I'm not sure. I believe, God, that you're, you can heal this hip, but I'm not, I'm not real sure. So where is that full belief and belief in the, in the, in the promises of God? Scripture is that for us. And in Romans 15, 4, I was just looking through this morning and this just jumped out at me. And Paul's talking to the Christians in in Rome. He says, for whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. And so our believing in the promises of God gives us this, this hope Understanding that he means it when he says, I have a plan for you. And it's to prosper you. It's to give you a future of hope. As Christians, we're hopeful people. As as Christians, as followers of of Christ, we have hope in God. We have hope in these promises. We, We have true belief and hope that it's for us. And it makes a difference in us. And it's not some really hard textbook of do's and don'ts and rules and regulations, it really is perfect instruction for us. We can read scripture and see what to do and what not to do. One of the best Bible studies I did was called Big Dummies of the Bible. It was such a wonderful book. And then the little caption under it says, and how not to be one too. (laughs) There are some dummies in the Bible. I know we're not supposed to say dumb and stupid, but there's some parts in there that you're like, I would never have done that, or, yep, I've done that. So we learn from that, and because of these stories, and because of the scripture, because of these lessons that are in here, we can believe in these promises from God. It makes a difference. So when we have those, I believe, help my unbelief moments, God says, look at my word. The spirit then gets involved, and it says, let me remind you of the ways of Jesus. Let me remind you of the teachings of Jesus. So we offer praise to God. We believe in the promises of God. Then the E part of obey is we enjoy the peace of God. The world is not always a peaceful place. That's easy to see. That's easy to look in the news and follow that and see world peace. The thing that every beauty pageant has always said they would do. World peace. It doesn't happen very often. And that's not new. 
first wars of the Bible, first times of, of unpeacefulness, unrestfulness is there. And if we listen to those voices of, of, of Satan over the voices of God, the things that he says for us to do, we're going to see that. We're going to get wrapped up in that. And all of a sudden, we're not going to have much peace in our hearts either. But when we enjoy the peace of God, that means we know that the, the unrest that we are facing, the, the battles that we are in, we're not alone. And there's peace there. And that's the thing that you can see, I think, the difference in, in God followers and in world followers. We see a peace. I see a peace uh, among many of your faces, even though I know you're struggling. I know things are tough. I know you may be having a hard time, but there's a, there's a peacefulness there that we know. And Jesus says, my peace I give to you, he says in John 14. My peace, not the kind of peace that the world gives. Now listen to that. Lean on mine. Accept this peacefulness. And the let peace begin on earth and let it begin with me part is a, is a beautiful song. And it makes sense because we can't say, well, world peace would happen if they started being more peaceful. It would be great if y'all started doing better. It starts here. And so when we offer praise, when we believe in these promises, we enjoy the peacefulness of God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Be still. How hard is that for so many of us to be still? It's hard for many of us to be still. It is very hard. We always say kids are all fidgety. They're moving around. I got plenty of thumps and stuff on Sunday mornings from being a little fidgety in the pews. Some of you probably did as well. But the peacefulness of God, it passes all understanding. It, it allows us just to stop for a little while. You feel like we're just going and going and doing and, and sometimes we get caught up and, and instead of doing church, we need to be the church. Too many times we, we get caught up in the, in the rat race of, of life and want to climb that, that corporate ladder to be something more and more and more in the, in the face of, of the world. But, but maybe God's saying, that's not what I'm asking you to do. And you won't have that peace till you hear it. And it's whatever job that you're called to be and to do, whatever God's created you to be, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're not doing it, you'll notice something missing. You may make a gazillion dollars. You may have all these accolades and, and, and things on your wall of saying all the stuff you've done, but you're missing one thing because you're not in God's will, and that's peace. So when we obey God's commands, when we, when we listen and do what he says to do, we enjoy the peacefulness. And it's a peacefulness the world can't give us. Because the world's going to say, keep going, keep going, do more, do more. Jesus says, just be still. So obeying God, offering our praise, believing in his promises, experiencing and enjoying his peace. And then it gets to that why, yield to God. You know what a yield sign is? I remember learning to drive and hearing my dad, you know, because some of us talk when we're driving you know, to the other drivers. And then sometimes we just got to look at them and then we get questioned, why are you looking at them? And then we answer because we want to see what a dummy looks like, you know, stuff like that. And so you, you hear these things. We don't do it. You know, y'all don't do that. Our parents used to do this. And my dad, I remember hearing him at a yield sign, the person just sitting there, just looking. He says, it says yield, not stop. I've always remembered that and what yield is. Sometimes God's saying yield to my purpose. Doesn't mean stop. Keep going. Keep serving me. Keep loving me. But listen while you're doing this. We can be still and still hear God. We can be still and keep going and keep doing. And so yielding to the purpose of God. What is his purpose? What's he called us to be? What's he called you to be as an individual? What has he called us to be as a church? So when we, we yield to that, we get to that, 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 that make a decision time. What's God's purpose for you? What's he called you to do and to be? Who are you in the Lord? What is God's purpose? His purpose is that all would know and believe and accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior and be saved. That's the purpose. That's why Jesus came to this world to serve, not to be served. 
And when we obey all of this, when we do as God calls us to do, we can't experience these things. We can't say, okay, that's God's purpose. And some of us struggle with that. Some of us, it takes us a while. It took me a while to get it. It got, took me a while to get what God's purpose was and for me and in my life. And finally got it. And then obeying started being easier. I didn't look at it as I got to obey and do the rules and follow the laws. Instead, I was enjoying following a much better way. I think that's what it means for us to obey. To trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. There's no other way. And the scripture talks to us in such wonderful ways. You read the before and the after of, of the story. And you see that Peter and the other apostles were in prison. They were being held because they were teaching that Jesus stuff. And they were told, don't do it. And that's why Peter responded this way and said, we have to. Because I think he remembered hearing Jesus saying, because if my disciples don't cry out, if they don't speak up, the rocks will. And I think Peter and the others said, I'm not going to let a rock outpraise me. A dumb rock. Not going to happen. So he says, we have to obey God's way. Doesn't mean we don't listen, we don't follow the rules of the land. We have to do that, but God has to be first. We've got to follow his way. And then we look at the end of this scripture in, in verse 32. And he goes on to say, and we are witnesses to these things, witnesses to the things that God has done, witnesses to what it means to be obeyers, to be followers. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. So there is an incentive to obeying when we do this when we obey him God will give his spirit to us he will give us everything we need he's not going to say I want you to follow me to do this and then say good luck and I hope it works out for you and let me know how it ends he's there with us every step he's given us the spirit to guide us to help us to show us the way so when you look at this word obey, don't, don't look at it as, as a negative sense. Don't look at it as something I've got to do. Look at it as something you get to do. What a huge difference. I've got to go to church. I get to go to church. I've got to go serve on this committee tonight. I get to go serve. I've got to go to another SPR meeting. I get to go. Because God's called me to that. And I love God. And if we keep his commands, it'll show our love. So don't look at this as a negative. Don't look at this as obey is a bad thing. Obey is not a bad thing. It allows us gifts from God when we obey him. I hope you'll do so. I hope you'll look at this in, in a way that says this is a positive thing in my life. I enjoy obeying the Lord. There's a lot of voices out there. There's a lot of things trying for our attention. There are a lot of avenues and ways to go. God's got to be first in all of it. Listen for his voice. Keep his commands. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word that allows us to obey because it is the best way to go. It is, without a doubt, the way to you that makes things better. It doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect. It doesn't mean we'll never face hard times. We just know by these promises of yours that you'll be with us. And that makes all the difference. So help us, God, to trust and obey, for there's no better way, there's no other way, there's no clearer way to happiness than to trust in you. Let us sing about that, Lord. Let us live that each day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody, please stand. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all the
Ken, I'm going to ask you to put that last verse back up, if you would, please. Trust and obey, not the, the, the whole verse, if you would. I know this is all of a sudden Eddie's telling you to do something. Obey, telling you to do something that's not on the script. But if you could pull that back up somehow, that would be great. Because I want us to see that last part of that last, of that last verse. That in fellowship suite, we'll sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side on the way than this part. What he says we will do. That's obeying. That's the obedience. Where he sins, we will go. That's trusting him on the way. Never fear, only trust and obey. So go in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Trusting and obeying, he's got it. Go in his ways. Go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.